Morning, Mr. Blair. Be with you in a minute, Adam. Welcome to Virginia City, Reverend. I thank thee, sir. Huh? Planning on staying? No, sir. Just long enough to water our animals. You're very welcome, Reverend. Just help yourself. I thank thee. And may God bless your day. Here. Yeah. Our people have had a very long journey. We've come all the way from Ohio. Adam! I'm glad you rode in today. Come on in. How's Ben these days? Adam. Oh, uh, he's fine. Here's your bill of lading, Adam. Tell Ben I want the cattle shipped by the first of the month. They'll be there. Good. Time for a little drink? No, thanks. It's uh, a little early for me. I like my cards from the top. You've been getting them from the top. That card you were just going to deal me came from the bottom of the deck, mister. It's the five of clubs. Mister, you're just asking for trouble. Hold it. Get out of here to both of you. And stay out of here. Mine. Get him off to the sheriff, you chin gambler. How'd it beat him anyway? Why did you step in? Uh, he was gonna shoot you. Well, I guess that's as good a reason as any. But now I owe you. Where you riding? West. Ride a piece with you? Fine. Last time I saw one of them sec trains was just outside Salt Lake City. Funny thing about them people, they don't use guns. I know, they don't believe in them. Where's your horse? Livery. I didn't get the name. Cartwright. Adam Cartwright. From the Ponderosa, huh? That's right. You in the ranching business? Not yet. But I'm looking for a stake. I want some land and some cattle that don't belong mostly to a bank. I don't like owing anybody. I throw my saddle on the calico. Well, I rode the edges of Ponderosa yesterday on my way here. A mighty big place. How does a man get a place like that? He works. In the shape that horse is in, I'd say you've been looking for that stake a pretty long time. I have. But then it takes a lot of looking. 
Well, we can always use good help at the Ponderosa. You offering me a job? Forty a month. At the end of the year, you get your pick and ten head of stock. Bonus. You make this offer to everybody? No. Nope. Why me? You look like you can handle it. You talk right out, don't you? I try to. Well, that's a mighty tempting offer. Well, you think about it. I'm doing just that. Right now. We are weary. We must find a campsite and rest for the night. Camp right here. Sure, you can have a prayer meeting tonight. We'll get Hoopla Sal and her gals to come and join in. <laughs> I know thou art seeking amusement, but please allow us to pass. How do we know you ain't desperate characters? My friends, I assure thee, we wish every man good days and a long life. And ask, and ask only to pass in peace. Pass in peace. <laughs> He's asking. Ask them for nothing, Father. Well, what do you know? You're kind of pretty to be with this kind of outfit. I bought them clothes. What do you say, honey? You and me have a drink of whiskey, huh? Yeah. And maybe I'll uh, buy you a new dress, huh? <laughs> Come on, honey. Ain't you got any life in you? Come on, honey. Let's have a little fun, huh? Yeah. You all right, ma'am? I believe so, yes. Hold it! Get him out of here. Oh, he was just funnin'. Get ready to move. Hurry! Please, Matthew, before there's more trouble. I thank thee very kindly. Thou art a very brave man. Is everything all right, sir? Yes, thanks to thee and thy friend. I'm Jacob Darien. I'm Adam Cartwright. This is my daughter, Regina. Oh, uh, this is, um... Sam Board. You're riding west, sir? Why, uh, yeah, yes. Well, so are we. Uh... Maybe it would be a good idea if we rode along with you. If thou art going that way... Uh, we are. Well, then thou art indeed welcome. Indeed. Nice girl, that. Yeah. Sam Boyd, huh? Your name is familiar to me. I figured it might be. You could have used another name. Don't see any reason to. I figure I owe a man something. The least I can do is be honest with him. Thanks for the job offer. It still goes, Sam. For the protection and the guidance thou hast given us this day. And especially we give thanks for our new friends who have served us so well. And for this earth and this sky and this water. 
And we wish thee, Lord, a peace-filled night as we wish it for ourselves and our fellow men. Amen. 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 Here, let me help you. No, thou art a guest. And thou art a most pretty young woman. Thou art a strange man, Adam Cartwright. Strange? Why do you say that? Thou had much to say to me every time thou looked at me today. And yet, now that the opportunity is here, thou, thou sayest nothing at all. Well, maybe... Uh, maybe I just don't know what to say or how to say it. Simple and direct, as is everything under God's sky. What puzzles thee? Um, your father, uh, them, your customs. All disturb thee, Adam? Yes, uh, well, no, I mean, um... Well, if, uh, for instance, if it were my train, I'd... I'd circle the wagons at night instead of, uh, stringing them out. Oh. And I'd pen the stock inside in case of trouble. What trouble? Well, any trouble. Uh, well, look, uh... Yes? Well, I think and um, do things one way and... And and we do them differently, is that yes. it? Well, isn't every man entitled to his... his own beliefs or his own manner of living? Yes, but... Uh... But what, Adam? It's you. You disturb me very much, Regina. Oh? Why? Because I'd like to know more about you. Because, um... <sighs> well, we're uh, right back where we started, aren't we? Oh, no. We've come a long way from there. I'm disturbed by thee also, Adam. Children! Children! Go help thy mother. Susan, go along with thy brother. Where's thy friend Adam? Uh, he's with your daughter. Helping her to get some water. My daughter allowed a guest to help? Ah, uh, Reverend. I kind of got the idea he wanted to be with her. And uh, I kind of got the idea that uh, perhaps she wishes to be with him. No objections? A man might as well object to the wind and the sun and the rain. What are you carrying here, Reverend? Him books? No, my friend. Not exactly. Jacob! Jacob! We have visitors coming. Welcome. Welcome, friends, to our humble campsite. Welcome. Peace be with you, my friends. And with you. Who's in charge here? I am. Call me Jacob. This is my friend Matthew. Hey, that fellow sure got a face full of hay, ain't he? I'm Ben Cartwright. And you're on Ponderosa land. Ah, then these men are, are thy sons. Oh, we are indebted to thee, all of thee. Is that so? Indeed, sir. 
why we have all this fine grazing for our stock, plenty of water to take care of them. What more could a man ask? Well, a man could ask how long you're planning to stay here. We leave on the morrow. Oh. oh is something amiss? No, 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 no. You're uh, most welcome. If there's anything that my sons and I can do to serve you, please, uh, please ask us. Oh, thou art most kindly. May God bless thee often. Thank you. Oh, uh, there is one thing more we would ask of thee. Oh? That uh, thou remain and dine with us. Oh, well, I... Uh... Yes, sir, sure do. Thank you. Hi, Pop. Well, uh, these people are... Uh... I know. Adam, thy father has just bid us welcome on the Ponderosa. Well, I'm glad of that. Oh, this is uh, Regina Darian, my father. Ma'am? Now, uh, this is Sam Board. Uh, Mr. Board? These are my sons, Hoss and little Joe. Howdy. Mr. Board, don't we know each other? We do now. Howdy. The chow smells mighty good. Then thee will remain, Mr. Cartwright? So we insist. Well, then we will remain. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> Come, friends. Oh, Joe. Hoss, what would you say to a man who wore a gun that easy? Nothing. Least ways, nothing I couldn't back up. Mr. Gina, give me a little more of that. Certainly. You folks have been eating this kind of food all the way from Ohio? We have, sir. Hey, well, you keep shoveling out to him, you're not going to have any left. <laughs> Where are you headed? We hope to be in Slatersville by week's end. We have word of a large, fertile valley there. And God willing, we hope to buy land and settle in peace. Mm. Buying land, uh, that could be pretty expensive. Yes, but we work for many years and put all of our money together to do it. It is our dream to start a fresh new life, free of debt. All of your money? All of it. You travel 2,000 miles across the United States to settle in a land that you've never seen. I've been there. We, we've all been there many times in, in, in our minds. My daughter speaks truly. Before all this, the Ponderosa belonged to thee. Was it not a dream in thy mind also, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, of course. Very much a dream. How was the prayer meeting? What do you want? <laughs> You'll never make a preacher, Sam. You know what I want. What's the matter? Don't you want to let us meet your hymn singers? Take them and get out of here. Who do you think you're fooling, Sam? Not them, not me. We want our cut of that five. It's gone. I lost it. Mm-hmm. Well, we figured you'd do that, Sam. But we figured you'd like a chance to make it up instead of getting killed. You can make it up, can't you, Sam? There's a meadow about a half a mile from here. I'll meet you there in the morning. You got an hour, Sam. A strange woman, Regina Darian. What is it? A 
I don't bother you. You treat me well, Adam. What do you mean? They would think me faithless and, and hate me if I spoke of it. You could never be faithless. I know that much about you. And I could never hate you. I know that much about myself. Oh, Adam, I do have faith, but I... But what? Well, we will pass on from here tomorrow. And they will think of me as that one with the strange people. And they will forget me. I could never forget you. Oh, Adam, I'm supposed to believe that what will be, will be. Well, that was before we met. Yes. You'll be gone tomorrow, and nothing will be. Oh, Regina. I'm coming with you to Slatersville. I'll ride along with the train. It'll give us more time together. Oh, Adam, yes, we have needed that. Oh, Adam, they must think me foolish and forward and... No. I think of you as beautiful, lovely. Adam. He thinks we've been observed, Adam. And what if we have? Where are you going, Sam? Tell the folks goodbye for me. Kind of sudden, isn't it? Well, I'm kind of like that. I don't figure you. I get a niche every time I hear folks talking about what they got and what they're going to get. What are you running away from? Maybe a fellow named Sam. About the job, I never was much at ranch handing. Cards are more my line. You can take the job and get everything you always wanted. You're all right, Cartwright. But it wouldn't do for me to listen to you too long. sure you know what you're doing now. I mean, going with the train and all. I know what I'm doing. We're different from them, Adam. She's different from you. I'm saying this badly, son, but I... It's what I want to say. I heard you. Good luck. I better uh, go say goodbye to Jacob and the rest. Hey, Adam. Uh, where are you going? Warm. Not the same place you are, I reckon. Yeah? Yep. Your idea of Pa's? Well, uh, I reckon it's mine. I sort of got to liking this old how cooking. As a matter of fact, I, I like everything about these folks. I didn't think I could even talk to them at first, but... And I don't reckon they're so much different than the rest of us. None of them. When? When I say. Well, if it's the kind of outfit you say it is, and if it's as easy as you say it is, why not right now in the daylight? 
Or maybe you need the night. Well, this will be a good place to camp for tonight. There's still two hours of daylight left. I know, Mr. Darien, but the uh, the animals are all worn out. Poor beasts. So are all of us. We've traveled a long way. But our fear has been that the land will be taken before we get there. Forgive us, Adam, if we seem impatient, but we're so anxious to reach our new home. Well, what about it, Hoss? You... Uh... Think that old trail across the plateau might still be good? Well, well, well I mean, you know, you've been traveling a long time. Well, we'll get them wagons across there or not. Well, don't you think it's still worth a look-see? Yeah. Um, water your animals, but uh, leave them hitched up. We'll see if we can't get you a little further along. Thank you, Adam. Wait a minute. These are fresh tracks, Adam, not over an hour old. How many do you figure? Yeah, it looks like at least four. Well, whoever they are, they could see the wagons all day. I never knew a man yet didn't come into a wagon train to get some good home cooking. Yeah, me neither. Unless they had a reason for not wanting to be seen. Well, those wagons and the stock alone, that train's good picking. Yeah, if they're planning to do anything about it, it'll probably be tonight. Father? Is something amiss? Uh, something I have to tell you. What is it, my friend? If you people have any guns on this train that you use for hunting or anything else, get them out. What I'm trying to say is that we found the tracks of four horses up there. Now, we have reason to believe that these four men have been watching and following this train all day long. Well, do you want them to come in and take everything you own without fighting for it? Surely you must have some guns of some kind. We have no guns, Adam. And we can do no violence on our fellow man. Well, they can do violence on their fellow man, and they will. Still, it would not be right for us. Matthew. Can't you do something? He's only thinking of us, Father. Regina! Hast thou forgotten what we all live by? We shall pray that this test comes not to us and that once more we shall be delivered. Mr. Darian, don't you reckon you could pray just as well if the wagons were circled up and they thought you was going to put up a fight? I, I can't see how that violate nothing. Whatever thee thinks best, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, sir. Adam? They would use this on a man? If I have to. We'll stay beside thee, Adam. If thou canst believe with us, then I will try to believe with thee. That 
Let's do. We may not have to use them. I see the wagon circled. It might make them skittish. They don't seem very skittish to me. Seems like they got lots of confidence. Yo, wagon! Adam, it is thy friend. He's made some friends. Yeah, they was just going to invite you right in, as soon as you got here. You won't need that. That's what you told me, Sam. But you told me a lot of things. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I want to pick that up, easy or any way I can get it. And I want to pick it up now. Wait here. Too quiet. Let's wake him up. not to do this, my friend. Get out of my... Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of resurrection into eternal life. Amen. We will move on at once, my friends. Prepare. Leave me too, Adam. I have to. I brought Sam Board among you, and he did all this to you. His things are not thine. In a way, they are. It's my job to get that money back. I better go with him.
probably head south. Board needs a new town. Yep. Man like that's always needing a new town, I reckon. That's real pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it really looks good. And I'm going to enjoy it. All of it. Well, we're partners, Shen. Are we? No, I don't figure it that way, Sam. As I remember, it, you owed me and the boys. Since they ain't here to collect, I just figured to take all our shares. Don't you trust me? No, I don't, Sam. Now you just throw the money over here. Right down there. Huh? Oh, and I'll, uh, I'll have you gun. Real easy. But first. Right down there, too. You could have had half. You never did have any brains. Could be a trap. Figures. Yeah. The board's gone all the way now, Adam. He's a killer. Yeah. Well, ain't but one of them left now. And that's where the money is. Where's the man belongs to that horse? I don't know. He left him here. He took another and gave me a $20 gold piece. Not more than two hours ago. Which way'd he go? Uh, west, toward Tollbridge Creek. We'd like some fresh horses. Well, now, we ain't in a hurry, huh? trail again. Adam, he ain't doing a blooming thing but leading us on one big merry chase round around a circle on these blooming rocks. Well, sooner or later, he's got to go to water. We're even. I don't know you now. <laughs> to find a town now. Yeah. Which one's nearest? Slatersville. Hey, ain't that work? That's right.
Howdy. Howdy. What can I do for you? This uh, fit any animal you got in here today? Why didn't I rode to death? Going to get him another horse tonight. You got any idea where the man is? I wouldn't be surprised he's over the saloon there cooling his damper. It's pretty hot out today. Thanks. <laughs> Miss Regina. Hoss. Oh, Hoss. Where is he? Where's Adam? Is he? He's all right, ma'am. Thank God. But where? Ma'am, the board's down here, and Adam's gone after him. Oh, no. Ma'am, I know how you feel, and I know how Adam feels. There ain't nothing nobody can do to stop him. The only thing we can do is try to help him. Hoss, I've got to find him. Adam! Adam, I beg thee, thou must not do this thing. Well, what about your father? These people? For whatever the reason, it would be violence. Adam, I see vengeance in thine eyes. I saw it when thee rode off. I've got to get that money back. If thee get it this way with a gun, then it is not worth having. Thee will find him, and he will be killed. Or thee will be killed. I'm sorry. Adam, if thee do this thing, it will be between us all our lives. It has to be done, Regina. You'll get over it. Will I? Look at me, Adam. I am no child. I've waited a long time to find the kind of a man I could love. Listen to her, Adam. You know I don't have any choice. I'm responsible for Sam Board. Thee are not responsible to him. Thee are responsible to nobody but thyself. Adam, I beg thee, put away thy gun. Adam, no. No. But we befriended thee. Get out of the way, old man. Have run all I'm gonna run. Boss, get her out of here. Adam! No, no, get out! Take this back. I'm all right. I had to do it. They are well enough to ride now? Yes. But they will come and visit us? No, I... I couldn't do that, knowing what it would do to you and to them. And to thee, Adam. And me, yes. He was my father, Adam. Their leader. I would be breaking faith with him and them. And myself, if I... Neither one of us had a choice, did we? Bless the Adam.
big help. You know, I had that gal sweet talked, eating right out of my hand. You two have to bust in and hustle me out of there. No, you just be grateful we got you out of trouble before it happened. Yeah. Well, you know what I think? Well, it couldn't be much. It takes brains for thinking. Yeah, well, I think you're jealous. Just because I find the only pretty gal in town was not wearing some man's brand. Didn't I tell you he's short on brains? Ah, but she was wearing some man's brand, Casanova. And he was rounding up a few of his friends. And they were fixing to take you apart. But there was no talk about putting you back together again. And me and Adam, being the charitable fellas we are, we just decided your hide might be worth saving. Uh, not that we care, but uh, Pa might have been a little upset. It was a 45. Sounds like you came from old Pete Redburn's place. Uh, he don't own no 45. Pete. They got everything. Three years work gone. Pete, did you get a good look at them? It was wearing masks. One of them was a big redhead. A redheaded man? Uh, hat fell off. There was four of them. Pete. Don't you worry, we're going to get a doctor for you out of Virginia City. How is he? He's just fine. Old Pete ain't hurting no more. Miss Cartwright? Denver round? I am, inside. Walking about six foot off the ground. Nervous as a rustling church. He hasn't had this buggy out since that school teacher left. Now, don't tell me he's getting married. No, ain't gonna get married, don't have to. Gonna have a woman around the place again. Connie's coming home. Yep. Yeah. By golly. <laughs> Four o'clock stage, huh? Tell you, Mr. Cartwright, that man's scared to death. <laughs> You know, I reckon since she's been back to that Eastern school going on four years, he figures she's the Queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she's going to see a lot of changes in this place. Yeah, Denver's done a good job with it in four years. Well, for the love of Zachary P. Taylor. That you, Denver? Yeah, that's me, Denver. Where are you preaching? Nowhere. But I wish I was. Behind a pulpit, I could take off these doggone gators. <laughs> but Ben, you think a man's feet keep on growing? Well, I've heard that a, when a person gets older, his body shrinks. I don't know about feet, though. Well, I haven't had these gators on since the Harrelson wedding, but I swear, either they're a size smaller or my feet are a size larger. <laughs> ben, you think I look all right? Well, you know, if I didn't know better, I'd swear you were a senator. I'm going in to meet Connie. I know, I know. Miles tell you. Yeah, he told sure, me. Sure, I told him. I ain't forgot how to talk. Doesn't seem like four years, does it? It does to me. I tried to get the house fixed up so Connie would have a decent place to come home to. I don't know. You think she'll like it? Oh, it looks real nice. I had some new curtains made yeah? for a room, some <laughs> kind of lace. <laughs> They're real pretty to me. Well, then it is real pretty. Now, what are you worried about? That little girl won't even know the place. I know. Oh, but she's grown up now. Eighteen, her last birthday. 
You make it sound like she's an old maid. When she left here, she was a kid. What do you know about it, you old goat? Who's an old goat? I ain't more than two years older than you are. That makes you an old goat. <laughs> For two cents, I'd quit. For two cents, I'd fire you. Now, hold on, you two. How long have you known each other? Too dang long. Since before Connie was born, that's long enough. Well, Denver, if I were you, I'd hold on to Miles as a foreman. You give me one good reason why I should. Well, if you don't, Connie will have you hide. <laughs> hey, you better get going, Denver. That stage lab will be early. Well, uh, it hasn't happened yet, but I suppose it could. <laughs> ben, you wouldn't want to ride in with me, would you? Well, no, you, you two have a lot to talk about. Yeah, I guess you're right. Four years is a long time. <laughs> well, you sure I look all right, Ben? Well, I told you. Yeah, like a senator. Ben, you can't lie worth a hoot. <laughs> well, and... Uh, like a state senator, then. Oh, there is one thing. Yeah, what's that? Well, you know, I was thinking, uh, it's a little short notice, I know, but this is Saturday night, and uh, Connie coming home, I thought I'd like to give a little welcome home party for Connie at the Ponderosa tonight. Well, that's fine, Ben. If I can get these gators broke in by that time. Well, uh, if you want to, you can come barefoot. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Connie will like a party. Well, I guess I'd better get along home and have the boys spread the word around about the party. Oh, I uh, won't be able to make the party, Miss Conrad. Somebody's got to watch the store. Oh, sorry about that, Miles. It's all we found on him, Paul. We followed the four men till we lost their trail, and then we went back and buried Pete. Not very much to leave after a lifetime of hard work, is it? What could anybody expect to get robbing old Pete Redfern? Well, I don't know, Adam. Some people say Pete did fairly well with that mine of his. He could have had some money stashed away somewhere. Paul, this seems to me like it's a like it's an organized outfit. This is the third robbery in less than a month. No, it's the first killing. Pete was killed because he got a good look at one of the men. Oh, that's so? What do you say about him? Well, not much except except he had red hair. Hmm. Well, I'll talk to Denver McKee. He might be able to pick up the trail you boys lost. Yeah, he's probably good at that. Old Denver's about half bloodhound anyhow. In the meantime, you go ahead and pass the word around about the party. I don't think Pete would want to spoil Connie's homecoming. You keep quiet about this. I'll talk to Denver. Right, Bob. Is that you I smell, little brother? Well, it couldn't be you or Adam. You two smell like horses. It smells a bit like the Wednesday Afternoon Lady Society, don't you think? Yeah, uh, maybe maybe Walsh's livery stable. Hey, we you fellas take a long walk, like to China? Well, now, little brother, we'd be happy to, but we got to hang around here to take care of your hide. Well, I'll tell Connie McKee to be sure to thank you. Oh, uh, Joe, uh, remember, don't mention anything about Pete Redfern at the party, OK? Yeah, right. Did he have any kin? No, no. According to Paul, his wife died a few years back, and that's how come he's out here mining. Hmm. Well, you boys see a red-headed man at the party tonight. Be sure to shoot first and talk about it later. Hey, wait a minute. Josh Perkins coming to that party tonight. He's red-headed and, and the best dang barber in Virginia City. I sure wouldn't want to shoot him. Oh, well, you know, I would if I were you. Look at the haircut they gave him. Here you are, Charlie. Wonder what's keeping Denver McKee and that daughter of his. They're late. Now, listen, Fleming, have you ever taken a woman anywhere and be on time? <laughs> Little Connie McKee. You know, the way she used to ride that horse, I thought she'd break her neck before she got a chance to go to school. <laughs> Wonder whether she changed the East or the East changed her. I guess the East rubbed some rough spots off her, but I imagine she's still the same girl she was. At least I hope so, for Denver's sake. He was shaking like a leaf when he went to pick her up at the stage. <laughs> Here's to Denver McKee, the greatest sheriff Colorado ever had. Here's to Denver McKee, the best Indian scout in the U.S. Army. Here's to Denver McKee, the most frightened father in Nevada. <laughs> oh, there they come.
It's got to be Connie because she's with old Denver. I don't know. It don't look like Connie to me. Now, you want to know something, fellas? I don't really care who that is. Welcome home, Connie. Hello, little Joe. It's so nice to see you. Hey, wait a minute. Is that the way to say hello to an old friend? In the East, that's the way we treat fresh men. Looks like you two are going to take up just where you left off four years ago, still fighting. Hello, Hoss. It's so good to see you. Hi, Connie. Doggone it. We, we like not even recognize you. You wait right here. We got a real big surprise for you. All right. Adam, how are you? <laughs> oh, Connie, you have changed. Yeah, not so you could notice. You still got that same old sweet temper. Hello. <laughs> how are you? Welcome home, Connie. Thank you. I didn't expect a welcome home party like this. It's so wonderful. Oh, I'd forgotten how beautiful the Ponderosa is. Well, she put on her best party dress for you. Denver, she's your daughter. You better introduce her to the guests. Thanks, Ben. <clears throat> Folks, most of you remember my little girl. But for those who don't, Connie McKee. Welcome home. All right, Welcome home, Connie. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. But it's a shame to cut it. Well, we can't eat it till you do. Well, just make a wish first and then blow. <laughs> She's a real beauty, Denver. She sure is, Ben. I can say that, because I can't take any credit for it. She's the spitting image of her mother. Yeah. I only hope I've done right. But what? Connie, how do you know about girls, Ben? You see, I didn't want her to grow up here like a wild bronco, marry the first saddle tramp that asked her. Or get tired of the ranch and head for San Francisco to twist the town by the tail. I wanted to give her what you've given your boys. Security. Background. I wanted to have a chance to see something besides steers and horses and the kitchen stove. Well, you've done it. And I know it hasn't been easy. Here's a little peace offering. Why don't we call it a truce? Well, seeing as you started the war, I accept. There'll be another war, little Joe, if you try to hog the guest of honor. Uh, Connie, why don't we go somewhere where we can drop a peace treaty? I have a better idea. Let's have some punch. Hey, that is a good idea. Why don't you two go ahead? Well, come on, fellas. Connie and I are old friends. But Connie wants to make new friends, don't you, Connie? Since you've been east, little Joe is a changed man, Connie. He doesn't seem any different to me. That's just on the surface. Underneath, he's wilder than a locoed steer. Right, Moy? Wilder sometimes. In Virginia City, they have what they call a Girls' Protective Association. When little Joe comes into town, all those mamas go into action. Why, little Joe, I had no idea. Miss Connie, would you care to meet some of my friends? Yes, I'd love to. Oh, Connie, I... I hope she isn't really mad at little Joe. No, oh, no, she's not mad at Joe. Just trying to show him that he isn't the only man in Nevada. Do him good. What's the matter, little brother? You having trouble? She acts like I got typhoid fever or something. What's the matter with me, anyway? Uh, got a couple hours, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, never mind. She's not the only girl in Nevada. Mm. She's the prettiest. Oh, come on. You're not going to really eat the rest of that. It's too good a cake to let go waste, Joe. Thanks so much for everything, all of you. That even includes you, little Joe. Thanks, man. For a while there tonight, you made me forget Connie'd ever been away at all. Well, the short straw stays. The rest of us get Denver, see if we can pick up the trail of the killers. Well, guess who's got it? Guess you stay, Joe. Well, I still don't see why we all can't go. Well, somebody has to stay here. Make yourself useful, Joe. Help number one cousin with the dishes. <laughs> Shooting it, Denver. We use this way to spend money, Ben. I 
just started wondering if I still had to touch. Then I guess it's a little like swimming. Man never forgets. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. I guess we better get started. Get started where? Connie, I didn't want you to be bothered with any of this, but you see, yesterday, an old prospector named Pete Redfern got killed, his life savings stolen. Oh, that's terrible. Well, it's more than that. Last night, two men got killed, and a Silverado mine payroll was taken. We're just going out, Scott, around, see what we can find out. I see. But why do you have to go? Well, Connie, I just told you, three men have been killed. I'd almost forgotten about the violence in the West and the fact that nobody is immune or wants to be. Well, we mean to try to put a stop to this before there's any further violence. Do you? Or do you enjoy it? Well, we're just trying to do what we feel we have to do. We'll leave my dad out of it. He spent most of his life with violence. It wasn't a game with him. It was his business and he's retired. Can't you leave him alone? Connie, these are neighbors asking me to help because I know about these things. Connie, last year, 200 head of steer vanished completely without a trace. And 50 men couldn't find them. Now we're looking for four men. Now, the sheriff needs all the help he can get. Now, if we find the men, and I hope we do, well, <sighs> it's not going to make us feel good. Or not going to make us feel big and brave. That's right, Connie. None of us get any joy out of this. Just something has to be done. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. You will be careful, won't you, Dad? I didn't get this old being careless. <sighs> Connie, you try not to think about it. Where'd you leave little Joe? Back at the Ponderosa? Oh, he's got a few chores to do. Uh, not too many. Nice day for a ride. If little Joe wants to see me, he knows where I am. The only trouble is he can't leave the ranch. Well, let him stay there. I certainly have no intention of running after him. Late. Don't tell me you were expecting me. Oh, Pa didn't tell you had to stay here and do a few things around the house, huh? Eh? Well, I really don't remember because I really don't care. Oh. Well, in that case, you probably wouldn't be very interested in a little present I was fixing up for you. A present for me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you don't care, there really isn't much point to it. Did I say that? Yeah, hey, well, didn't you? Well, I may have, but that was before you mentioned a present. Oh. Well, they really taught you a lot in that girls' school back east. How to be mercenary in one easy lesson. You're so wrong, little Joe. No woman alive needs that lesson. She's born that way. Oh, I just didn't know they admitted to it. But since you did, how do you like him? Oh, little Joe, he's beautiful. Well, if that's the way you say thanks, it'll just take me a second to rustle up about a dozen more just like him. Never mind. One beautiful horse like this is enough for anybody. Yeah, maybe so, but I don't hardly think one kiss is enough for anybody. Little Joe, I thought you had to stay back at the ranch. I know when I have something better to do, like uh, kissing my best girl. You mean kissing girls, don't you? Any girl? Well, now, where in the world did you get that notion? It wasn't hard. Almost everyone at the party last night volunteered that information. And more. Oh, well, you're not going to believe them. Well, why shouldn't I? Well, because they're lying. You mean there's no such girl as uh, Joan Curry? Well, sure, there's such a girl as Joan, but she's a... And, uh, how about, uh, Carol Childress? 
and Judy Polk and uh, Sally Putnam. How do you do it? You haven't been back 24 hours, and you know every girl I've ever talked to. I have only mentioned four. Would you like me to tell you the rest of the list? No, never mind. Of course, uh, you didn't do anything when you were back east, except maybe knit socks. Oh, you know very well I went to a girl's school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, only the way I heard it, there was a boy's school right down the block. How long is your list? You'll die wondering, little Joe. Look, Connie, those girls didn't mean anything to me. They... They were just... Girls? Yeah, that's right. They were just girls. Well, that's exactly what I am. A girl. Uh-uh. Now, you're a very special girl. Pardon? There was something I wanted to ask you. Are you going back east? Well, I'm not sure. Why? I just don't want you to go back, that's all. Well, that's hardly reason enough. Because I think you're very beautiful. That still isn't much because of Because I like you very much. I've only been back for 24 hours, little Joe. Tell me the same thing in 24 days. If we cut across the rim rock, and we can come in through the brakes. All right, how come you three are back so soon? We lost the trail. Four horses? How'd you lose a trail like that? It wasn't easy. They went into the Flint Canyons up near the timber line. Rock so hard there, you can drive a thousand head of cattle through that part and never leave a sign. They gotta be up here in the Sierra somewhere. Up one of those high meadows, probably. They they gotta have grass and water. Yeah, yeah but Adam, there must be a hundred places like that up there. We could ride for a year and not find them all. Oh, you could find them the first day. They've had all the breaks so far. It's about time we had one. We'll ride out of dawn. Uh, Pa? Hmm? Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't go with you. Oh? You mean there's, uh, there's something you prefer to the High Sierras? Well, no, it's just that, uh... Well, see, I didn't expect you'd be back so soon, so I promised Connie I'd take her into Virginia City. Mm hmm? Hey, Joe. Ain't you afraid you might be overcourting that little gal? I mean, you keep on like this, and she's liable to think you want to marry her. Uh, Joe. I think you ought to ride up into the mountains with us. It, uh... Well, there's a lot of snow up there, and, uh... Maybe it'd cool you off. <laughs> yeah, what, what's your big rush anyhow, Joe? You done without that little gal for four years. One more day ain't gonna hurt nothing. If I want me to ride with you, I will. <laughs> no, no you, you go ahead with your plans with Connick. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I think our little brother's coming down with a real bad case of loveitis. Mm-hmm. Well, never mind the loveitis. Let's get back to this. Now, look, we get up through the high meadow. Oh, I'm getting about half tired of this canyon. We must have been up here seven or eight times. I'm not only tired of the canyon, I'm just plain tired. But this is how Denver lost the trail, so this is where we start hunting. Start and finish. Above here, there's a half a mile of flint and wash rocks, four canyons, and all the points of the compass to choose from. Paul, hmm. what if they ain't up there at all? What if they just come this far to make us think they're going up there? With us behind them, they'd have to head for high country. I just know that. What do you got in mind, boy? Well, sir, a fox will double back on a hound, won't it? How yeah. come a man can't? I mean, they could lead their horses across the rocks and get over into, into Little Branch Canyon and go all the way back down the valley and then leave us hunting up here in the big country. Yeah. That might be just worth looking into. Come on. Four or five horses, Paul. They did double back. Uh, 
Well, one sure way to cover up your tracks is to ride down the busiest road you can find. I did take quite a chance, though. They might have been seen. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that they just didn't care if they were. What do you mean, Paul? He means that the killers aren't strangers. That's right. They could afford a double back. I'm beginning to think that they could even be one of our neighbors. Finger off that trigger. It wasn't my fault one of them saw us coming. Can still be easy. I'll throw enough lead into them to keep them busy. Brennan can work around back of the cabin and drop a torch on the roof. This barrel. Mm -hmm. Easy. Come out of nowhere. One minute it's quiet as a church. The next minute, Jess is down and bullets are whizzing like bees that are swarming. Did you get a look at any of them? Saw four of them, all masked but one. Hat on the, the back of his head, uh, red hair shone. I never seen him before, but I'd know him if I ever seen him again. There was no use, Pa. They had fresh horses. Ours were done when we got here. What about the others, Corey? Mask, like I said. But there was one. Clothes, maybe, or the way he moved. I I couldn't put a name to him, but I I I swear I've seen him a dozen times. Looks like you was right about him being our neighbors, Paul. Yeah. Let's get Corey to a doctor, and then we'll make a few social calls. Easy, Corey. Easy, does it? <laughs> well, the boys seem happy. How about you? Don't like the way things are going. Why? What's wrong? There weren't to be no killings. We decided that when we started all this. Oh, look, when you point a gun at a man, sometimes he has to go for his own. When that happens, he's got to pull the trigger. If I learned one thing as a sheriff, it was that. You never learn to shoot no man in the back. Harley's killing those two payroll guards. Got this whole valley stared up. Well, maybe Harley was a little hasty. Won't happen again. I'll take care of that. Meantime, we've got a posse on our necks. Why worry about that? I've led other posses around in circles till they got dizzy and quit. I can do it again. This ain't other posses. This is Ben Cartwright and his boys. They ain't gonna quit. It was simple, honest cowmen. From sun up till dusk, just chasing strays out of the draws. Denver, they're not strays. Any good cowman rides by. He's going to see you just drifting a few head up and down the valley. Now, we've been in this a long time. How come you're getting sweat up about it now? I'm thinking of Connie like we both was when we started. Miles, I know you love that kid like she was your own daughter. I know you're worried about her finding out she won't. A couple of more jobs like the last one. We'll have everything we ever wanted for her. I don't figure it that way. Oh, wait a minute. You getting ideas about quitting me? We both thought I quit, Denver. But I don't think we can. What are you getting at? First, it was just you and me. Then you sent me out at the Colorado Badlands. Pick up a lot of hard cases. Give them big talk about big pickings. 
Hey, yeah, they've had a taste of it. You can't expect them to let go now. I can call this thing off any time I want to. Can you? Holly! Brennan! All of you! We heard talk about some of you boys wanting to pull out. Where'd you hear that? With the payroll we've piled up, we bet on $30,000 now. Well, that's nothing to what we're gonna do. We got more men coming in, good men. Denver here was wondering how you men felt about a man quitting with his share if he wants to. Why, nobody better even think of pulling out. We come here to clean up. That sets real good with me, and that's what I'm aiming to do. Not the way you feel about it, boss? Sure. Yeah, Miles and I just wanted to see how you felt. Don't worry, boss. The first man tries to run out on us, I'll kill. Look as if you could use a drink. The water would be right fine. <clears throat> Trouble? Well, they. They jumped Winkler and Corey. Didn't you know they put up a fight? Winkler got killed and Corey got hit. Bad? Well, not too bad. Thanks. Got on the shoulder. He'll be all right. Do you recognize any of them? Nope. But we ran across the trail of one of them before. A redhead. That redhead had to be the one that killed old Pete Redfern. Ran across the trail of another one of them. Corey tells me that he's seen him before, recognized him by his walk instead of his shoulders. Corey says he must have seen him a dozen times somewhere. Without his mask, he'd be somebody we know. Might even be a neighbor. A neighbor? I find that hard to believe, Ben. Well, I didn't want to believe it either, but we picked up that trail today. They double back on their tracks right down the main road. Didn't have to worry about being seen because it's seen there every day. More killings every day. That's why we're here, Denver. I spent the better part of my life as a peace officer, Ben. I was lucky. I only caught one bullet. You got a sheriff. You got all the men you need. Don't ask me to press my luck. You pressed it when you went out with us the other day. We're all taking the same chance. Not according to the odds. I've been riding a streak of luck for 30 years. I don't intend to press it any further. So far, they've only got the miners and the mine payrolls. They might decide to branch out. You could be helping to put out a fire in your own house. My own house? All right. About time I started taking care of my own house. Taking care of other people's houses for 20 years. What the devil did ever get me? A hundred dollars a month, a lot of plaques in the wall, pat on the back and a bullet in the shoulder. Denver, I had no idea you felt this way. Well, now you know. I'm sick and tired of taking care of other people's troubles. Don't you think I owe something to my own kid? Yeah, well, I guess you got a right to your own way of thinking. Not gonna press you. But we're going out after those killers. Come on, boys. Well, it's a good thing she ran out of money. You'd have had to send in the hay wagon. Oh, little Joe, you know perfectly well I needed every one of these things. I'm sure you did, Connie. Stay to supper? Uh, no, thanks. I better show my face around the Ponderosa. I'm gonna forget I'm a member of the family, start charging me room and board. He'll change his mind. I'm gonna put these things upstairs, then I'll be down to cook supper, Dad. You'd better stay, little Joe. She's a pretty good cook. <laughs> Hey, you got a wonderful girl there, Mr. McKee. That's what I always wanted her to be. I, uh... 
I wanted to talk to you about Connie and me. Well. What's on your mind? Well, sir, Connie and I have known each other for a long time. Haven't we, sir? Yes, you have. Quite a long time. And I know you've probably heard a lot of stories about... All about me and those Virginia City girls, but I, I just wanted you to know that they didn't mean a thing to me, not any of them. I hope you didn't tell them that at the time. Well, uh, no, 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 sir, not at the time. I. Well, I'm... Anyway, that's not the way it is with Connie and me. I'm very fond of her, sir. Oh, yeah. And if Connie will have me, I... Well, what I'm trying to say is, sir, I'd like to ask her to marry me. Well... I don't think there's any way I can keep you from asking him. Does that mean you'd rather I wouldn't? I don't mean that at all. All I ever wanted was for Connie to be happy. Have the chances other girls have. Sir, that's what I mean to offer her. I suppose I knew all along this would happen. I should have known. I should have known. I'm sorry I upset you, sir. I'll be getting on home now. Tell Connie I'll see you soon. Little Joe gone? Yeah, he just talked to me. I was hoping he would. Like that, is it? Yes, it's like that. He mentioned marriage. <laughs> One thing at a time, Dad. First you fall in love. I thought you'd done that already. Uh-huh. But you have to give it time to grow, to build dreams, to be so filled with happiness and the wonder of it that you're about ready to explode. And then you get married. You know, all that we talked about, selling all this, heading east, you were so dead set on that when you first got here. I know, but I didn't realize then. You thought you couldn't be happy out here. I didn't think so either. That's what I didn't realize. That geography has nothing to do with happiness. Oh, Dad. I know why you were talking about selling out and going east. And I'll always love you a whole lot more because you were doing it for me. But now... You know. I know. Baby, all I ever wanted for you was happiness. Well, all right, go ahead and say it. What do you want us to say? Oh, come on, Adam. You've been walking around it like it was a rattlesnake. All right, it's somebody we know, a neighbor. Well, come on, say the rest of it. You think Denver McKee had something to do with it? No, nobody said that, Joe. Nobody's even thinking it. Oh, no? Then why do you tell me what Denver said about not wanting to help, then you drop it so fast I could hear the thud when it hit? The only thud you hear is uh, your heart when somebody mentions the name of McKee. Pa, what do you really think? Well, I'd stake my life that Denver had nothing to do with it. Well, I hope you're right, Pa. But we have to face the truth. There was only one man that wasn't at Connie's party the night the Silverado payroll was stolen. That's right. Miles Briscoe. Uh, you know, when I was telling Denver about the party, Miles was with him. He said he couldn't go to the party because he had to look after things at the Flying M. All right, so he wasn't at the party. Does that prove anything? No. Of course it doesn't, Joe. But it's worth looking into. Horse, why don't you uh, ride out to the McKee place? Have a look around and... If Miles leaves the ranch, trail him. How long you want me to stay, Paul? No. One of us will relieve you in the morning. Now, come on, don't look so worried.
that scared me to death. You must be half engine. You was plumb up on me before I knew it. I ain't seen anything? Not a thing. I think we wasted our time. Well, well, we're young, brother. We got plenty of time. Maybe so, but as slow as it went last night, I feel like a man of years old already. I'm gonna go get me some sleep. Right, breakfast already. It is? Uh -huh. Then sleep's gonna be the second thing I get. Hey, Hoss. Yeah, take a look at that. It's a red-headed man. Stranger, Miles in Denver. Go. Let's go get Paul out. I'm telling you for the last time. Don't you come around this ranch anymore. My red hair is like a lantern. You've been seen twice. Don't make any difference. The two that seen me ain't done any talking. Well, you're wrong. Pete Redfern identified you before he died. And Corey, the miner you shot yesterday, he's still alive. Well, I must be out of practice. You're not out of practice. You're just out of brains. I think we ought to lay low for a while. Things quiet down. You fellas sound like you're getting a streak up your backs. You set up this play, Denver. The rest of us have been taking all the risks. Sure, we had to do a little shooting. I want you to clear out of here. You think I want my daughter to see you? No, I don't think much about your daughter one way or the other, Mr. McKee. And I'm tired of sleeping up in those rocks. You got a bunkhouse back there. I mean to use it. Denver. You know this man? Sure he knows me, Ben. What about it? We've been looking for a red-headed man. You're the only red-headed man in the area, other than a barber in Virginia City. Since when is being red-headed a crime? Since we found out that a redhead killed two men, maybe two others. Do you figure to do anything about it? You take Connie back into the house. Come on, Connie. Come on. Now put away your guns, boys. You won't need them. You're taking a lot of chances, aren't you, Ben? I could outshoot you any day you lived. Maybe so. There's no reason for it to come to that. Denver. Why? I'd have staked my life. He had nothing to do with this. Why? That's very simple, Ben. I ran out of money. I did what I had to do, and I'm not backing down from it. There are other ways. What other ways? I did a good job as a marshal. When I needed money, I turned to what I knew best. I did a pretty good job at that, too. Denver. I'm gonna have to take you in. And give me a gun. Oh, no, Ben. You got to take it. Boy, oh, he means it. Yeah, man, I mean it. No, Denver, no. Don't you go blaming yourself, Ben. The man pulls a gun on you, you gotta draw your own. You got to pull a trick. He 
could outdraw me any day of his life. And he could shoot a lot straighter than that. You sure you want to go? I have to go, Joe. I have to get away. I need time to think and time to forget. I understand. I love you. Why do you stop me? Because I do not want to pay for the stupidity of my brother. Wow. Only you think it is stupid to kill the white man. I know that if you scalp a white man, the Bannocks will be blamed. But we must kill them and drive them out. No, Larios. They are too many and too wise. We'll never drive them out. I don't like them any better than you do. But we have to learn to live with them. You talk like a woman. All right, brother. Soon to be chief of my people. You handle the white man your way. I'll handle him mine. You make me ashamed to call you brother. I'm glad you brought him here. You remembered what I read you about love thy neighbor. I had to when I found he was still alive. I couldn't let even a white man to die in the sun. I'm glad he lives. I'm not sure I am.
So you would rather leave our village and live here like an outcast? What are you doing here, Largos? You should never have taken that Shoshone woman as a wife. You too are the son of a chief. Your place is with your people. My people turned me away. This is my home now. Did you move the body of the white man I killed this afternoon? No. I did not move him. Why? I went back to take the scalp so I could give it to our father. This one would have made him proud. You would say the same about any white man's scalp. That was not any white man. That was the owner of all this land that once belonged to our people. You mean the white man whose scalp I saved is the owner of the range called the Ponderosa? That is what I mean. I left the white man where he fell. I know this kind of woman. If the white man lived, she would have you take him. You might even have brought him here. I will look inside to make sure. This is my place. I say there is no white man inside. You will not look. I'm sorry you visit our home only on such an errand. There is no white man here. I believe you even less than I believe my brother. You better leave. Now, Lagos. He is still bleeding. Will you change the bandage while I get some fresh water? No. I can't touch him now. Stop that. You've done enough. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's enough! Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, Pauline set and trapped at this hour. Don't worry about Pa. He can take care of himself. Yeah, well, he's gone awful close to Bannock country. Yeah, and them Indians been acting up out there lately, too. Well, they're getting hungry, Hoss. Can't hardly grow anything up in those mountains. Hunting gets worse every year. Pa doesn't go into Bannock country by himself. Yeah, but Adam, our property runs right up there in them foothills. That's pretty close. Well, he took his blankets with him. Maybe he's going to sleep overnight. Hi, Ike. Howdy, boys. Where's your pa? You're up so late, ain't you, Ike? What do you want, Paul? I, uh, I brought him a present. I got something to talk to him about that I figure won't keep much longer. Where is he? Well, he must have just missed him on the way over. He, uh, he's been out setting traps in that foothill country right near your place. We expect him back any minute. Dad, gone. If I'd known he was going out that way, I could have saved myself the trip. Yeah, what'd you bring him? Well, uh, I can show you boys while we're waiting here. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Turned it up with my plow just yesterday. It's an Indian skull. It must be 200 years old. Yeah, they show up every once in a while all over the valley. Guess there's no question about who originally lived on this land. That was then, not now. How come you to bring it to Paul? I can't figure him wanting a human skull around the place. Who's anything about a human skull? That's an Indian skull. <laughs> Ike, I wouldn't uh, use those words with Pa. You, uh, you know how he feels on the subject. Yeah, well, he knows how I feel about it, too. I got no kick about engines rolling around under my land, but I'll be dad burned if I want any live ones squatting on top of it. Your land. Yeah, my land. Your Pa give it to me to homestead. Now, Ike, I don't think there are any Indians living on your land. Well, they're awful darn close to it, anyhow. Your Pa's got to do something about it. We'll give him your message, Ike. No, Hoss, I'll give it to him myself. I'll uh, sit with you fellas for a while and uh, wait for him. All right, you can sit a while, but no more talk about Indians, all right? Suit yourself. Now, Ike, it's liable to be a long wait. As a matter of fact, it may be all night. If it is, you can sleep in the bunkhouse. And I think we can do without this.
Bill's fever is worse. Why? Why did you try to kill me? My husband did not try to kill you. He found you lying wounded in the clearing and brought you here. It was an engine that tried to kill me. I know that. You're Bannock. I am a Bannock. But I did not try to kill you. Perhaps I should have. Metsu. I... I didn't... I didn't mean to accuse you. I know you've... You've cared for me. I'm grateful for your help. You would have died if he had left you where you fell. What is this place? Where are we? This place is on your land. No villages or settlements. Indian villages in my land. This is not a village. Atoya and I live here alone. Why are you not with your village? I am a Bannock. She's a Shoshone. When we married, neither tribe would accept us. Where did you find out about the Bible? I lived with a man of God and his wife for three years in a white man's town to the west. Then I met Matsu. And we will stay together no matter how many times we have to move. Who said, said anything about moving? We do not stay where we are not welcome. You, you are welcome. We would still be intruders on white man's land. You'd not be intruders if, if I gave you land. You would give land to a Bannock. If you came in peace. Our people have not signed the white man's peace treaty. Put me on my horse. And... Oh, I'll try to find my way home. You are not well enough yet to travel. I must... I must... I must get to a doctor. We will get him home. It will take all of God's help. All right, I tell you. I'll hold him on his horse. You pray. Pa! What happened? Where'd you find him? He will need a doctor quickly. Sure. He's badly hurt. Come inside, both of you. I'd like to know more about what happened. Don't let them red devils go in the house after what they've done to your pa. They probably tried to kill him themselves. They brought him home, didn't they? Now shut up. How did it happen? We found him wounded in the clearing. We tried to care for him, but the fever is very bad. He recovered enough to tell us where he lived. We brought him here. Do you mean my father was in Bannock country? No. No, he was on his own land. That's where we found him. You see, I told you, I told you them heathen devils were sneaking around on your land. It's a lucky thing they were there. Now keep your mouth shut, Ike. Thank you very much for what you did. You'll need rest and food. You ain't asking them to stay. It will be better if we leave. Your father's a strong man and very brave. We both hope he is better soon. No, please, please, I... I want you to stay. Well, I ain't staying in no house where they ask engines in and they make them welcome. Why don't you leave? All right. But don't you forget that I got a big bone to pick with your pa when he gets better. If he ever does. It's a very, very poor way to say thank you. I'm sorry. You would just make yourselves comfortable here. I'll be right back. We shouldn't have come here. It was a mistake. No, Matsu. It was God's will. If we hadn't brought the white man home, he would have died. He's a good man. He's promised to let us live on his land. I never believed in any white man's promises. He's resting more easily now. 
How long did you have to pack him? Paul's a pretty heavy fellow. Not far. We had to take him from his horse. The wound was opening again. Why don't the two of you get some sleep while we wait for the doctor to get here? I am sure my father would like to see you before you leave. Thank you. How you feeling, Paul? Not better than I did. Well, that's all we can do for him for now, boys. I want you three to take turns making sure that he stays in bed. Don't you worry, Doc. I'll make sure he takes orders. You stay in bed, Doc. I'll see to that. Look, I'm sorry about that wild ride coming over, Doc. You can take it easy going back. Yes, indeed. I certainly will. I don't know how Mr. Cartwright got hurt, nor why you helped him. But one thing I do know for sure. If you hadn't helped him when you did, he'd be far beyond all help now. We can't spare men like Ben Cartwright. Thanks, Adam. I see you tomorrow, Ben. Now you rest here. That's an order. Thank you, Doc. See you in a little while. Boys, you mind if I have a few minutes alone with my friends? Not at all. You stay in bed, Paul. I'll be back in a minute. I don't even know your names. You have heard them before, but in your favor. My name is Atoya, and my husband is Matsu. I'll remember them. And I haven't forgotten what I told you about that piece of land. We didn't ask for it. I know you didn't. I've been thinking about it. I want you to have a big piece of land, enough for a farm. What would we do with such a piece of land? You'd farm it, raise crops, animals, live off the land. I know nothing of such things. The red man knows more about hunting and fishing. White man knows more about farming. If we put what we know together, there will be more than enough for us all. This will never be. There is no way to begin. You offer us a farm. But I know nothing of such things. So I say, keep your farm. Let me ask you a question. Would you come to live as a farmer on your own land if I and my sons and the, the settlers in the valley would teach you and help you with the things you do not now know. It would be so wonderful, Matsu. It would also be difficult. It might not work. I might not learn. I've talked too much. I never believed such an offer could be made. The white man always takes. We will talk and pray and let you know our decision. But I have lived among them in the white man's town. I know them better than you do. Perhaps you do not know me well enough. I know you very well, beloved. And I believe we can do this thing together. Why can't we stay here? I could stay here anywhere alone with you forever, Matsu. But what of our sons and daughters who will be coming, if God wills it? Would you keep them alone too? We can go back to the tribe someday. They won't always be at war. And I am a son of a chief. The youngest son. And with no great love for his brother Lagos, who will be the next chief. That is true. This is a chance to have a better way of life than we have ever known, for us and for our children. I don't know that it will be better. I only know that it will be very different. And it is this difference that frightens me. 
frightens you, Matsu. You have told me that nothing frightens you. I spoke those words as a warrior and a hunter, and they were true. And I was raised to be these things, and not a farmer. You have also told me that our people and the white man must learn to live together in peace. But you are asking much more than that. You are asking me to put down my bow and arrow and pick up an axe and a plow. You are asking me to eat bread instead of meat, to wear cloth instead of leather, to live in a house instead of a wikiup. You are asking me to stop being an Indian. And I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> I lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my strength. I do not know that I can do it well, or even that I will not fail completely. But I will try, my dearest love, if you will stand beside me. No, can't do it, I tell you. I couldn't hardly believe my own two ears when I first heard it. Can't believe it now. Well, you might as well believe it, I, because it's true. Well, then I, I think you're going out of your mind. Or else that engine banged you real good on the head before he stuck his knife into you. <laughs> now, whichever way it is, I ain't going to have no engine for a neighbor, and you ain't got no right to make me. Now, look, let's just simmer down and talk some sense, I. I don't want to simmer down. Now, you listen to me. The night that you was hurt, I come down here to get you to run off two savages that sneaked onto your land. And they were squatting in a stinking tent right next to my boundary. Now I find out those same two savages has been given a farm by you right next to my land. And you ask me to simmer down. Now, those two savages saved my life. Yeah, more like they stuck their knife into you first. All, all right. Now if you have to give them a reward, give them whiskey or money. Don't give them land. Don't you think that Indians at least have a, a call to share the land in this valley? No, not next door to me. What have you got against Indians? I sure would like to know. Well, I sure would like to tell you. I don't like them because they're bloodthirsty savages. They're worse than wild animals. They're twice as dangerous. And I don't like them because they're heathens. And I don't like them because they won't work. And they can't work. And because they're dirty and they stink and they're sneaky, and they're drunks, and they're thieves, and God knows what else. Most of all, I don't like them because they scare me. I hate them. What is it about them that scares you? They got long black hair. And red skins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to try to answer you, Ike. Not now. But someday somebody's going to have to answer for people who think like you do. There's nothing wrong with the way I think. No, I'm not going to argue that point either. But neither am I going to back down from what's my right to do. Now, I promised Matsu and Atoya that piece of land, and I mean for them to have it. Yeah, but well, why put them next to me? It's not just a piece of land, Ike. It's, it's treating them like people. I've no intention of giving them some worthless scrap up around the rocks. They've already got that. I want to give them a piece of land that they can work, a piece of land that they can farm. And that land next to yours is the best I have. And it's my intention to give it to them. If you put them on that piece, I move out. Well, that's a decision that you're going to have to make, Ike. I'd think about it a long time before I made the move. Now, look, all I'm asking you to do is, is give those two a chance. I don't want you to be a friend, just be a decent neighbor. Well, I'll tell you what kind of neighbor I'll be. I'll treat him just like there wasn't there. I won't talk to them, I won't answer them, I won't help them, I won't let them help me, I won't go on their land, and if they put a foot on my land, I'll kill them. Ike. You do anything out of line, you'll answer to me.
Look at me, Atoya. Months of work, and I am now nothing. Not an Indian. And certainly not a white man. Never mind, Atoya. Eating bread at a table. What a thing for a warrior. It's only when you're tired that you get this way. If you've done so much and we've come so far, we're not only at peace with the white man, we've made friends. And enemies. Our close neighbor, I Taggart, is an enemy. He is difficult. But I noticed that the other settlers have no love for Mr. Daggard either. I entered this house in peace only because you were born my brother and I owe you something. The feather of the chief. Why do you wear it? Our father died two days ago, full of hatred for the white man and scorn for his youngest son. I am sorry. I loved him. And I've had no love for you, but I hope you will be a better chief than he was. I tell you one thing, Matsu. We no longer will sit in the mountains and starve while this valley is full of plenty. We no longer will sit in the mountains and talk about peace treaties. Tomorrow the Bannock Braves go on the warpath and this valley will be full of death. I have known you would do this. I also know that you are wrong. You are the one who is wrong. You do not belong here, never will. As chief of our tribe, I ask you to come back. The day of the lance is upon us. You were once a great warrior until this woman turned you soft. Come back to the tribe. You are needed. I am needed here, Lagos. Atoya is with child. And I rejoice for the both of you. Bring her with you. The ban will be lifted. If she carries your child, she will be welcome. It is mostly for the child that I will stay. If you stay, then you will die here like the white men you are trying to imitate. I give you till tomorrow to think on it. I wait no longer. Are you sorry now about the child? You know I prayed for that child. To your God as well as to mine. But would you go back if it were not for that? If it comes to dying, I'd rather die as a warrior fighting with my people than, than as a farmer living among strangers. Then you would go back. I might. But the child is not only important for us, but for the future of our people. I will stay for my little wife and for my child. What will you do about your brother? In the morning, I'll ride to Ben Cartwright. The settlers have to be warned. Even though he's your brother? I still remember the teachings of my father, Atoya. When a decision is made, it must be kept. Even against a brother. Hey, Matt! <laughs> Congratulations, I just heard the wonderful news about Atoya. I only heard about it myself three days ago. Oh, you know the way that kind of news travels. Women talk. Wonderful to see you. You don't get over this way often enough. Yeah, why don't you bring your pretty wife with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm digging her up a present. It's, it's a cradle. <laughs> Ain't been slept in since little Joe jumped out of it. <laughs> Save your welcome until you hear the rest of my news. The Bannocks are going on the warpath. Oh. How do you know that, Matt? Because my brother is now chief of the Bannocks, and he told me. You mean they're planning a raid? No, more than a raid. It will be war. How soon is this to start? Any moment. Maybe we ought to get word to Fort Bradley. Uh, you know the way they are. They're not going to do anything until after there's an incident. You better warn the settlers. Get ready to ride into the valley. All right, Father. It is good to warn the settlers, but uh, 
I came to warn you first. That's very good of you. No, 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 no. My brother has two people he hates. One of them is me because I won't go back and join them. The other one is you, Ben. Well, why should your brother hate me? It was my brother who tried to kill you the time we brought you home. People of this valley are getting to owe you more and more, Matt. Especially me. Why don't you and Atoya stay with us here till this thing blows over? Oh, thank you. I would like to bring Atoya here for the sake of the child. I... I will stay on my land. Good. You do that. Adam, better get word to Ike Daggett. Right. Ike Daggett is my neighbor, Ben. I will take care of warning him. Matt, I don't want you to take that chance. Don't step foot on his land. I don't like Ike Daggett, Ben, but I am not afraid of him. You have enough country to cover. I will warn the Daggetts on my way home. Bring that dang gun right into bed with us. You pay it more mind than you do me. Martha, I told you a hundred times. When you got red engines for next door neighbors, you gotta be ready for trouble, especially at night. Bah, you've been saying that for months. Staying up late, sneaking around with your dang gun, and they haven't so much as set foot on your dang place. That's because I scared them good and proper to begin with. And I kept them scared every chance. Watch it. I heard something out there. Yep, you certainly got him scared, all right. I'm gonna go see what that is. I daggered! Daggered! I daggered! Lord maketh his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. 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 Thanks, Ben. Quit it! Ike, what's the matter? I won't stand it. I won't stand for no heathen saying prayers in my wife's grave. Now you quit it! Ike, she ain't no heathen. She knows as much about the Bible as you do. What are they doing here anyway? They're Those trying... engines that killed my Marthy. They're trying to pay the respects just like the rest of us now. You ain't got no more respect for the dead than a coyote. Quit it! I want to tell you how deeply sorry I am that my people killed your wife. 
I tried to warn you. Don't you talk to me, you Indian. I understand how you feel. I am sorry. You dirty, rotten, lousy, stinking savage! Mike! 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 Come on! Mike! Stop it! Mike! Here! There, you savage. You killed my wife, I killed yours. An eye for an eye. An eye for an eye, Ben. An eye for an eye. That's in the book. Mike! An eye for an eye. It's in the book. Dagger. I can hardly recognize it. Paul! Paul, come out here! That's engine work, Paul. You don't reckon, you don't reckon Matt. Let's get him into the house. He sure done a job on him. Yeah. Wonder why he didn't finish it. He didn't want him to die. Help me! Where, where am I? Help me! Ah! It's all right, Ike. It's all right, Ike. You're with me. Ben? Ben Cartwright? It's me, Ike. Ain't, ain't so easy to kill like Dagger did. He left me, left me alive, a purpose, so as I could suffer. Who, Ike? Who? Who, Ike? Who? The, the engine. Your friend. One you tried to make into a white man. Matsu. Know why? Why he left me? Left me alive, Ben? He wants you. Wants you to meet him in the cave in North Fork. He wants Ben Cartwright, so. Uh, otherwise, every settler in the valley will get one. What I got, but... Well... Just didn't understand what we were trying to do. What are you gonna do now, Paul? Matt wants to see me, I'll go to him. I've got to try to bring him to his senses, I own that. He's gone too far now. Ike Daggett killed his wife. Paul, we can't let you take the risk. Anything I've ever done has had some risk attached to it. I'll go up by the North Trail. If I'm not back by morning, you come for me. Paul? Hey, you forgot this. Well, that won't bring me back, or Matt either. Matsu! It's Ben Cartwright! I didn't think you would come. I got your message from Mike Daggett. He said you wanted to see me. 
I'm here. Then you saw what I did to Ike Taggart. I saw. Aren't you afraid? No, Matt. I'm not afraid. <laughs> You know about rawhide. It shrinks in the sun. It gets tighter and tighter. I know. Why did you come here last night? See if I could help you. All right, go ahead, help me. Give me back the wife that I loved and the child she carried. Tying me like this. Bring her back. No. But I think that making you suffer enough will ease some of my pain. I guess you're right. I just wanted to help you, not hurt you. Help me? You held my arms, Ben. You let that madman shoot at Toya right before my eyes. Do you think if you hadn't held my arms, Ben, he could have done that? I say you killed that Toya just as surely as if you had pulled the trigger. Does it hurt? Yes, it hurts. Good. Good. It will get worse. Strong man, Ben. I thought you would be screaming by now. Our Father, who art in heaven. What did you say? Hallowed be thy name. Stop that. Thy kingdom come. Stop that, Ben! Stop it! Ben! You shouldn't have done that, Ben. You shouldn't have prayed. That would made you let me go. I meant to kill you. But I failed here, too. I failed at everything. I lost my wife. My brother Lagos is dead. I failed being a white man. Failed being an Indian. Oh, that. You didn't fail. I don't think you could ever fail. I wanted to kill you, Ben. It was important for me to kill you, and I couldn't do it. If I couldn't torture you into hating me, then I couldn't kill you. Can you forgive me for hurting you? I did. 
did that before you cut me loose. I will help you home, Ben. No. I'll be all right. Matt? You're going home. Do you have people? Yes. Oh, you'll be back. Yes. We will be back. There he is. Hi, you all right? Yeah. Oh, did he do this to you? Yeah. I'll get him. No. no. Let him alone. He's going home. Back up in the mountains? Yeah. There's a new chief of the Bannocks now. 